My favorite under known about tools in the lab is Easy Vision Loading Dye. It's a sample loading buffer and a fluorescent dye in one for your agarose gels. Not a paid endorsement, I just find this really helpful and I find that people don't really know about it that much. So I thought I'd do a quick post on it and how it works. And I was like really surprised. It's actually pretty cheap. It's like two cents a sample. I was assuming it was gonna be like really, really expensive because people don't seem to know that much about it. But it's actually cheaper than a lot of those like safe alternatives for thidium bromide, which isn't that dangerous after all anyway. Um, so here's a bit more about it and how it works and how I use it and how you can use it. Um, assuming you have it or you can convince your boss to get it because it's really cheap. So, okay, here's how it works. So I'm going to assume that everybody who's watching this video knows what agarose gel electrophoresis is. It's a technique that we use to separate DNA pieces by size by running them through a gel mesh made up of the sugar agarose. And if you need more on the background, I will point you to a link on that so you can watch that. But when you run the DNA through the gel, you then have to go and look at where the DNA ends up. And so you'll expect bigger DNA pieces will be higher up in the gel and smaller ones will be lower down, um, although they're horizontal. So it's more like towards the starting end versus towards the ending end. But anyway, in order to actually see those DNA pieces, you're going to need some sort of DNA stain, something that binds to that invisible DNA and makes it visible to us. And typically these are going to be things that are like fluorescent. So they're going to absorb a wavelength of like one wavelength, light of one wavelength, and give back light of a different wavelength. Much more on how fluorescence works in other posts, but basically these molecules, they absorb this light and this light is energy and different wavelengths of light have different like amounts of energy in these pockets these little packets called photons and if it's the right wavelength the molecules will absorb that energy and electrons in that molecule will get excited but then they'll get unexcited and they'll fall back down and they'll release that energy in the form of light of a different wavelength so that would be your emission wavelength that's getting released and your excitation wavelength that's getting absorbed and much more on this in other posts but this is going to allow you to convert light that you can't see to light that you can see and it's going to allow us to convert the DNA molecules that we can't see to something that we can see if we're able to bind a fluorescent molecule to the DNA. So there are a variety of different stains that can bind to DNA, either like intercalating agents, so they bind like in between the bases, kind of like in the stack, they kind of slip themselves in, or in the like major or minor groove. And so a, common, a really common one you'll see is a thidium bromide. Um, and so this is one of those intercalators. So it goes like slips in between the bases. And because of this at like high concentrations, if it could get into your cells and you had a ton of it, um, it could be mutagenic. So cause mutations, which could potentially be carcinogenic. So cause cancer, but all of this like, danger or thidium bromide like that's like way overblown and so you have to actually like drink a ton of it in order for it to actually hurt you um and so i'll post you i'll link you to a post more on that as well but there's a lot of like regulatory um, things that go into ethidium bromide because of all the hype about its toxicity. So people have looked for like safer alternatives, which sometimes aren't actually even safer. But those are like cyber um, stains and things like this. These try to typically just like replace the ethidium bromide. And so with the ethidium bromide or with these cyber stains, you typically add them to the to your um, agarose when you're pouring the gel, you add it to the gel itself and then cast, like it'll be in the gel, or you add it afterwards, you like soak your gel in it. And so this can be time consuming, it generates a lot of waste, and if it's a thidium bromide waste, then you have to go through all these like hassles in order to dispose of it properly um, with your environmental health and safety people. So easy vision makes things a lot easier, not just because you don't have to put it in your gel or in your, um, in the, like soak it or whatever but then you have less waste generated that's actually like harmful or anything and they say it's less harmful but i don't know how much less harmful it actually is um but you're using a very very small amount of it because you're only going to be using like one microliter of this per sample and it's also going to have your sample buffer in it so like all of the other sample loading dyes it has dyes so these are going to be not the dyes that bind to dna but these are going to be dyes that just are visual by themselves like we don't have to excite them we can just see them with our naked eye or actually yeah we can see them with our naked eye and so there are different dyes and these allow you to track the progress of the run they're not showing you the dna they're going to run independently of the dna so you could have no dna in your gel and you'd still see those bands 
Now you might see a different number of bands depending on what sample loading buffer you're using. So for example, the Easy Vision dies, these have three loading, these have, um, there's like a one, two, and three version. The one version has one die, the two version has two dies, and the three version has three dies. And so these three dies, um, there's like a, a die that runs as if it were 4,000 um, bases long, so about 4 KB. There's one that runs as if it were for about 400 bases and one that runs about 10 bases. And so you'll see the top one, if you're running one with three, the top one, it's either like xylene um, cyanol or some like alternative to it that's proprietary. Um, and so it's like this light blue. And then you'll see a middle band, which is gonna be darker blue. That's your bromophenol blue. And then you'll have your amaranth, which is this pink one at the bottom, which runs like it was really small. And kind of funnily, amaranth is actually bigger than bromophenol blue, but it's higher charged. And so it's the charge that makes things move through the agarose gel. And so because this molecule's more charged than the um, bromophenol blue, it's going to move faster even though it's bigger. So it doesn't have that direct um, length to charge relationship that DNA has. So you'll see those dyes. This is going to tell you when you can stop the gel without having, to, with knowing that your DNA, the bands are going to be farther enough apart in the region that you care about. So you're going to get good resolution. Um, and you don't have to worry about your DNA like falling off the end because you ran it too long. So those bands are just going to help you be able to visualize when to stop your run and things like that, as well as make sure that the run is running okay and you don't have things all going wonky or, um, or that sort of thing. Maybe if it is, you might need to add more loading buffer. You might need to, your gel might have slipped in the rack or something like that. So something just to help you track the gel's progress. Now the sample loading buffer typically also has something heavy. So your sample doesn't just pop up out of the well when you load it. So this will be something like glycerol or phycol or something else big and sugary. Um, it's kind of like inert. So it's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to kind of make your sample sink down so it, and not pop back up after you pipette it in. And so the Easy Vision dye has all of those, but then it also has that fluorescent dye, and that fluorescent dye is going to bind to the DNA. As to what it is, it's proprietary. I, I found like something for like Easy Vision instain gel that said it contained DAPI, um, which is one of those like minor groove binders. And I found like I've written a post a while ago where I found in the SDS something that said DAPI, but now I can't find it anymore. So if anybody knows the source, um, feel free to tell me, that'd be great. Um, but basically it's a fluorescent dye that binds to DNA and then it runs along with the DNA through the gel. And then you can go and you can stick it on either like a UV transilluminator, so just one of those trays, or in a gel dock. If you're using one of those gel docks, they recommend you using like a um, cyber green filter. Um, and, but yeah, it also works on like a UV tray, just like you would with ethidium bromide or something like that. You can go and you can visualize it. So super duper handy. Um, and yeah, it's more convenient Then you don't have to add it to your gel. And it's actually a lot cheaper. It's like a hundred dollars or so for five mils and you only need one microliter per sample. So assuming you're, you're loading six microliters. So it's a six times loading die, which means that you need one microliter per total of six microliters. So typically what I do is if I like run a PCR reaction, I'll mix one microliter of this with five microliters of my PCR reaction and load it on the gel and you're good to go. Sometimes five microliters is too much and so I'll just dilute my sample down because I don't want it to like overload the detector and like saturate it and then yeah, not good. So that can happen too if you load too much of your ladder. So typically the ladders are designed, they're like 0.5 micrograms per microliter or something like this. And they want you to load like one microliters worth, which if you're loading the with the 6X, that means what I do is I have like one microliter of the ladder plus four microliters of water and then one microliter of the loading dye. Now it's a pain if you're, you're running these ladders all the time to make it fresh every time. Plus then you keep having to dilute. I mean, you keep having to thaw out that ladder stock, which is then going to lead to it being degraded potentially. So it's a lot better to kind of make more of it at, in the beginning and then store it like that. So what I typically do is I take like 10 microliters of the ladder, mix it with 40 microliters of water and 10 microliters of that sample loading buffer. And then I can, um, then I have 60 microliters worth and I can, if I want, I can aliquot them out into smaller portions so I don't even have to freeze saw those as much. Um, if I wanted more, I can make more. Um, it's just handy to have it then already, already made when I'm ready to go the next time. Because you have to remember that even if those ladders say like purple or something, like they have the sample buffer with them, in them with the dye, with the like 
visual dyes, the tracking dyes, they don't actually have that fluorescent dye in there. And so even if they have the other dye in there, you need to also add the sample vision dye or else you're not going to be able to see your ladder on the gel. So just a helpful note about that. So again, this is not a paid endorsement um, and I just find it really useful. And when I, I used it in undergrad and then I used it in my previous lab, but then there were a couple labs when I rotated, I didn't use it in. And when I joined this lab, people, um, hadn't been using it. Um, and so I was like, we should get this. Um, and so thankfully we did. And I just find it really helpful. And so I thought I'd tell more people about it. And so I hope you found it helpful too. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's not as cheap as ethidium bromide. It's not quite as sensitive, but well, if you incorporate the ethidium bromide, you have to pay a lot more to take care of all the waste things with it. It can be a lot more cost effective, at least the way if I did the math correctly. So I just found it helpful and hope you do too.